Hi, Barry from Kirfton. I thought we'd give you a bit of a walk around on the outside of our camper trailer when it's packed up. As you can see, it's fairly compact. This is a four berth camper trailer, but it folds up fairly tightly. Uh, height of this is less than 1.7 metres, uh, which is smaller than most full size four wheel drives. So in fact, you can look over the top of it uh, with your rear vision mirror when you're towing it down the road. Uh, it's also fairly narrow. It's less than, uh, it's about 1.9 metres wide. Uh, that's uh, less than most four wheel drives. Uh, length is about 4.2 metres, uh, unless you've got the extended drawbar, which makes it a little bit longer. At the back here, I've sent a latch to hold the lids closed. This is lockable. In fact, all latches on the trailer are lockable into all compartments. Obviously, this is a tailgate with latches that folds down. Uh, you can see that in another video. These are the rubber bumpers that contact the ground when the tailgate uh, folds down uh, it's to, so that you can use that tailgate as steps on the inside. Gas struts. They help you um, open and close those lids. Coming around the side, water filler. This fills via a valve into two water tanks. The front tank is 63 litres. The rear tank uh, is either 63 or 86 litres. So that gives you up to 149 litres of water storage on board. Moving forward, this compartment houses the hot water service. So in here, there is a diesel powered furnace. Uh, this heats uh, glycol in this storage tank. Uh, inside that tank there's a heat exchanger which you can pass your fresh water through to heat that water up and send that to the kitchen or to the uh, shower outlet. The glyco also passes through a heater that sits somewhere behind this uh, panel here inside the camper trailer. That heater can be used to heat the inside of the camper trailer when you're camping if you're in cold weather and power that off the diesel furnace. It's a fairly efficient furnace. Uh, at most it uses half a litre of fuel per hour, but usually much less than that if it's cycling on and off. Also in this compartment is various valves for the uh, water system on board. So you can select whether you're drawing water from the rear tank or the front tank. Um, you can even draw water from an external source. You can put a hose on here, throw that into a river and pull in water from a river, pass it through your hot water service and have a hot shower with water from, your, uh, from a river while you're preserving your fresh water on board for drinking purposes. Uh, you can also move water from one tank to the other, which is great if you're travelling in remote areas where you might want to keep um, all your known good quality water in one tank and, and have another tank that you might be filling up from an unknown source, which may be of unknown quality. Moving forward, gas bottle storage compartment. This stores two four kilogram gas bottles. Uh, the rear one here is connected up to a uh, regulator, which is fed through to the kitchen for use on the gas cooker. The other tank's a spare tank, or you uh, could use this to power a external barbecue. So we've got enough space in the front of the trailer to store a barbecue, um, and so having that second tank in there is useful for that purpose. On the top here, we've got a open storage area with a couple of tie-down points or four tie-down points. You can store a swag or anything else you need on top of here and tie that down while you're traveling. Front, uh, Door here leads into the general storage compartment. In here we've got a, our diesel tank. That stores five litres of diesel. So even with the heater running flat out overnight, you can run the heater for about 10 hours before you worry about uh, needing to fill up with diesel. And typically it uses much less than that. We've also got on this side our shower outlet. So uh, you can have your uh, hot shower, uh, potentially using your river water. This particular storage compartment is set up for storage of a uh, couple of jerry cans on this side, plus a chemical toilet, which easily fits in here. Moving up to the front, we've got a 360 degree drop on coupling. This is great if you're doing full driving. It gives lots of uh, articulation between the towing vehicle and the trailer, so that won't get bound up. Um, attached to a galvanized steel chassis to prevent corrosion. Uh, handbrake, if you're parked on an uneven surface and need to stop the trailer from rolling when you uncouple. This door opens up into our general storage compartment. As I said, this one's been configured to take a Weber barbecue on this side. The other side's got the chemical toilet and or we'll take the chemical toilet and a couple of jerry cans. Uh, even with all that in there, there's plenty of space left over. This door opens up again into our storage compartment but gives great access to our um, electrical control area here up the front. We've got the head unit for our uh, battery manager. 
It's uh, basically a fuel gauge to show you uh, how much power you've got left in the battery so you know when you need to recharge those batteries. Uh, this trailer is equipped with an inverter, so there's a power point up the front as well as inside the back of the trailer. We've got a couple of master switches here. These turn on power to the trailer and also independently to the fridge. So when you're tra traveling, you can ensure that all the power is turned off inside the trailer apart, for the fridge, apart from the fridge. Solar input to charge your batteries. There's also pole storage up inside here if you're using the rear awning. Poles for the main tent are stored inside the main compartment, but if you want to put the awning out the back, then the poles are stored inside this front compartment. This door opens up into the battery compartment. In here are two batteries, 120 amp hour each. Um, they'll lay at a can for perhaps four days before you need to uh, bother with charging. These ones are AGM type batteries. They can be uh, replaced with uh, lithium batteries if uh, wanted. The battery manager sits up inside here and the inverter's on that back wall. Also other fuses and, and uh, electrical equipment in, um, inside there. At the front here, there's a connection for the spare tire winch. So the spare tire's up underneath the chassis here. It's on a winch. You put the handle that normally used to widen down the stabilizer legs. Uh, onto that connection there and you can wind that spare tire down to the ground so you don't need to lift that up underneath manually. Um, that spare tire or the spare tire um, compartment is large enough for a full size spare tire. These tires are um, 285-75R16. They're a typical uh, size of tire that's used uh, when upgrading a four-wheel drive. Same size of tire that I run on my Toyota Land Cruiser. Uh, these are by default on 16 inch um, alloy rims for this model, eight inches wide. Um, the wheel arch is designed to take up to a 35 inch tire. These are about 33 inch tires in, in the um, Imperial um, scheme, but the wheel arch is big enough to take a, um, a 35 inch tire by 12 and a half inches wide. Um, so that's quite a large tire for those that are doing um, um, serious off-road usage. At the back here, we have a stabiliser leg. This one's down on this side. It swings down, up and down. And that can be wound down to stabilise the trailer when you're setting up the, uh, the tent so that it doesn't rock overnight um, um, when you're trying to sleep if someone's uh, moving around and a little bit restless. Hope that was interesting. Thanks very much.